We'll show you our forecast with that adjustment in it here shortly. This is the old retirement numbers across the top in blue, and this is our estimate for the coming retirement numbers based on age 65. So in five years, we're pretty much back where we started. Right now, it looks like about 80% of the pilots are going to keep flying. Not everybody wants to keep flying. Not everybody that can keep flying will be able to make it all the way to 65. Okay, so as we approach 65, we expect an increasing number of medical retirements. Productivity, yeah, we can get a little bit more work out of the pilot, but not a lot. Okay, for those that are out there doing it, I can tell you that the 1,000 hours divided by 12, the 83 hours a month, pilots are pretty close to that now, and most of them will tell you that they're not going way past it. Okay, remember it's twice the number of hours to on duty and three to four times the number of hours away from home. So you can't go way past 80. Some of this is going to have to be made up with additional pilots. Who's the consumer? Well, ba baby boomers are moving into the prime spending years, and for business or or professional travel, they have the money. If you're going to have money in our society, it's between the ages of 40 and 60, and you are the ones that drive the flying. Profits at the airlines approaching a billion, even $2 billion a year in the forecast. The last time these airlines made a billion dollars a year, United and Delta, they hired 1,000 pilots a year. They made a billion, they hired 1,000. There are seven airlines up there approaching a billion dollar profit in the future. If they make money, they will grow and hire additional pilots. We have been making money even with high fuel costs, but if it stabilizes, even at a high value, at least we can plan for that. Many European carriers hedge their fuel 100% and know exactly what their fuel cost will be for the entire year. It takes a lot of money to do that in advance, but at least you're guaranteed you can make a profit. You know your cost. What we have in orange here is the airline profits, and in blue, we've transposed on top the airline hiring. And boy, if you don't see a number one, one to one ratio there, we're not looking at the same chart. Aero TV is brought to you by. Today, there is an affordable, high performance, easy to own, and easy to operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500. The jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. On the age basis, we've come from the high 20s to the mid 30s, slightly older military, slightly younger civilian, um, and of course, the pilot's vision has been allowed to be corrected now, virtually no limit on uncorrected vision, uh, and it's come right up to the 25, 30% range of corrected vision. Flight time now in green, the flight time bounced up a couple of thousand hours when we started hiring mostly civilian pilots, which we did um, you know, back in the late 90s. And the military civilian in, military in green is now less than 50%, has been for quite a while, and today it's running 30% military, 70% civilian in what we would call a robust pilot market right now. Foreign flying, we'll talk about this being a unique opportunity, used to be the crew leasing companies that were sort of so-so about U.S. licenses, not a, US, a lot of U.S. expatriate pilots overseas. That's not true today. The number's growing very rapidly. Uh, they're hiring in, in large numbers and making really good deals. Many of them are even basing, for the very large airplanes, are basing here in the U.S. They like high time and seat, large transport airplanes, and this used to be only big airplanes, you know, DC-10, 747s, that type of stuff. Today, we've got ATRs. Lots of 737s and Airbuses, small airplanes, RJs are everywhere. There's crew leasing opportunities for just about all of our pilots, from the smallest airline to the largest, uh, overseas if they want to go. Corporate aviation, about uh, 19, 18, 19,000 pilots. The top jobs here are more difficult to get than the major airline job. Uh, networking is critical. The fractional is a section of the uh, corporate flying, which is the airlines like a lot because it's very structured. It has very close to a full dispatch system. Pilots are a known quantity. You can see the hiring in the fractionals is simply incredible. I mean, they've really been ticking along. If you're hiring 25% of your pilots a year, how long does it take to make captain? Two-man crew, 50% your captain. You're looking at two or three years, four years to be a captain. Flying brand new airplanes. Uh, NetJets just opened their contract, with it, added to their contract without it being open. Starting pay is 55 to 65,000 now. The other fractionals have come up to match it. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. 
the Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Airlines come and go. We talk about this. There's, you, know, you start out with uh, 40 airlines, you go to 110, you go back to 50, go up to 120. Most people, half of these airlines never start. You don't even see them. They're not on the board. Of the ones that start, 5% make it five years. Okay, this is a risky business. Non-jet operators, they have no jet aircraft. Uh, turboprops, in some cases, recip airplanes. 22 of 43 hired 181 in February. And look at the percentages of hired. Look back in 05. They hired 53% of their pilots in one year. How long does it take to make captain? You could be a captain almost immediately because they don't have enough new pilots with 1,500 hours to upgrade. Regional airline growth has been phenomenal, uh, particularly after 9-11. Oddly enough, in hard times, smaller airlines do very well. The bigger airlines offload their shorter, thinner routes, and they've grown tremendously and hired tons of pilots. Now their growth has slowed, but they're losing their pilots to major airlines, so they're still hiring. Still should not have trouble attracting, and I see no trouble attracting people to this career. The problem they have is going from their current job with wife and family, quitting their job, to taking flight training, taking a low-paying job, and working in that for a couple of years. That's the problem. Not a lack of people that want to do this. The starting pay is too low. The cost of training is too high. Right now, today, if you have $65,000 in six months, you can be in the right seat of a regional airliner in six months for about 65 grand. Okay, the airlines are going to have, they're taking pilots. How were those pilots selected? With a MasterCard. They had the money to learn to fly. Eventually, when the airlines start paying for it, they're going to do the selecting, just like the military does. And that's a model that's been in at Lufthansa and around the world for many, many years. And all the airlines will sit there and say, no, we can't do it, we can't afford it. But you can either that or not operate your airline. Because there are a number of guys that can quit their job, have no income for six months, pay $65,000, and then work for $25,000 a year for a while is about gone. And these airlines have had classes that have been empty, not empty, but not full, for now up almost 15 months. We've not been filling our classes at our regional carriers. And we are down to, I won't name names, but we're down to some pilots that have been hired with less than 200 hours. That doesn't mean there wouldn't be great pilots. It just means there's a, a, a whole different generation being selected. Average age, not 35, but 25, 23 years old, less than 200 hours. Okay, this is a whole different game. Picking pilots when they're experienced is one thing. Picking pilots when they ha have no experience is much more difficult. 